Hello, welcome back to Learn Economia. Today we are going to discuss the concept of excess capacity in monopolistic combination. Let's have a look on to the same here. Before starting on to the term called excess capacity, it's very very important to consider what is called a monopolistic competition. As we all know, it's a market structure and we know that a market is a mechanism or it's a kind of arrangement where the buyers and sellers will be coming together to have some kind of exchange. So, what you do is that you go to some shop and uh, you will be purchasing some commodity and uh, in return, what you give is the price for that commodity to the shopkeeper, isn't it? So, in our economy, there exist different types of market structures. Uh, for example, we do have oligopoly, we do have uh, monopolistic competition and uh, several other kinds of market structures. So, uh, we could find that when it comes to monopolistic competition specifically, we, here we do have different companies or we do have different firms and these firms will be offering competitive products. So, these competitive products would be acting as substitutes. But that doesn't mean that these would be the actual similar perfect substitute. Though these are substitutes, these are not exact substitutes or we could find that these are not perfect substitutes. Not perfect substitutes. Okay. So, this is the basic idea of what is called a monopolistic market, competition market structure. To give you an example of a monopolistically competitive market structure, just take the case of soap brands in our country. So, if you take the case of India, you could find that different straw soap brands are available to you. Is it So, you do have something called Lex, you do have something called Medimix, uh, you do have something called Santur, then there is something called Pears, and so on, isn't it? So, these soap brands might be actually uh, giving you different varieties of features, isn't it? So, though all these companies are producing soaps and it is there in the market, the main idea here is that these are producing different brands. So, this brand in products is something that is very, very specific in the scenario for monopolistically competitive market structure. So, I hope you now have got a very clear cut idea regarding what is the meaning of monopolistically competitive market structure. So, it is a market structure where you do have what is called branded products. Though the different companies or the firms that are there in this particular market structure produce what we call as substitutes, these are not exact substitutes, these are not perfect substitutes. Okay. Now, having understood what is called a monopolistically competitive market structure, now it is time to learn what is called excess capacity. Now, coming to a kind of activity that is done by the firms in a monopolistically competitive market structure, we could find that your firms would be producing below their optimal point or these firms will, which are there in a monopolistically competitive market structure will be producing with, below their efficient scale of production. So, why this is happening? Why uh, this... Uh, this kind of behavior is happening with firms. Why companies are actually producing below their optimal or efficient scale of production? This mainly happens due to product differentiation. So, what we do have in a perfectly competitive market structure where there would be production of homogeneous commodities, here in a monopolistically competitive market structure, it's all about product differentiation. So, it is something that we could get diversity isn't it so as again if i would like to take you to the soap market where you do have different companies producing their own branded goods isn't it so if you just look on to the soap industry you could find that there have been various various companies the features of each and every commodity that you have here is different for example some soaps would be having more glycerin content whereas some other soaps would be having more oil content some other soaps will be having more chemical contents. Some other soaps would be very, very natural. So, in this instance, though we are dealing with something called soaps, the differences that you will be having in the products that, is, that are produced by different firms, this is something that we have to consider. So, this will definitely offer you a wide variety of options to choose from. So, 
for the same reason, what uh, firms in this monopolistically competitive market structure would basically do is that they would be existing uh, in this market structure and they would mostly follow something called a non-price competition. So what does it mean by a non-price competition? The competition will definitely happen and uh, this competition is actually not based on prices. Not based on prices. So they will be considering some uh, something else, some other elements and they will compete uh, by considering that element. So for the same reason, what you do have in a monopolistically competitive market is a downward sloping demand curve. So you can have a, a typical uh, demand curve where you consider quantity along the x-axis and price along the y-axis. So you will be having a downward sloping demand curve where you, you can actually consider the law of demand law of demand. So what does law of demand say? Uh, when other things remain the same uh, or set to this paribus, there exists an inverse relationship between the price of the commodity and quantity demanded. Or when price increases, the quantity demand falls. Price increases means quantity demand falls. And uh, when price falls, what happens? When price falls, quantity demand increases. And when price increases, quantity demanded would be falling. So something called inverse relation is some between price and quantity demanded is being explained in the downward sloping demand curve. Now, when it comes to a monopolistically competitive market structure, the firms in this particular market structure would be having a tendency to produce their output, which is lower than what they, they would be creating by minimizing their average total cost. Okay, so we can call this average total cost as ATC. ATC stands for average total cost. The firms in the monopolistically market structure will be producing some output level which would be lower than what would minimize their average total cost. So that means these firms, the companies that are involved in a monopolistically competitive market structure are not engaging in the production of their output at a point where ATZ are minimized. So average total cost is actually minimized at some particular point but unfortunately the firms in a monopolistically competitive market structure is not, these firms are not producing at that particular point. So this is a drawback that we can have in a monopolistically competitive market structure. We have to see why this is happening. So. Before that, let me tell you the graphical explanation regarding uh, this F excess capacity scenario. To have this, you have to take quantity or output along the x-axis. Then you have to take the price along the y-axis. And uh, you have to go for uh, your typical demand curve, which is downward sloping. And you will be having your MR curve. MR stands for your marginal revenue. Marginal marginal revenue curve this is your MR and now you go for the typical U-shaped cost curve the, which is your LAC. LAC stands for long range average cost. Long range average average cost curve. It is U-shaped. Okay now uh, so this happens due to returns to scale and now we have to see uh, what is actually happening in this context. So to find this, you need to look for the equilibrium. So you have to consider the point where MR equal to MC and MC cuts MR from below. So you could find that this is the uh, equilibrium point. And now we have to see this is a point at which both the efficiency condition and the, the sufficient condition are uh, meeting together. So you will be having uh, this as the equilibrium point MR equal to MC scenario. So this is your LMC. This green line is your LMC. LMC stands for long run marginal cost. Long run marginal cost. So this two is U-shaped, the typical U-shaped curve due to returns to scale. And you have to find the equilibrium where MR equal to MC. So this is attained at this particular point. The green LMC curve is actually uh, intersecting your uh, red colored MR curve at this particular point. And um, so it's an equilibrium point. Now uh, you need to arrive at the output level that is happening at the uh, at this particular scenario. So when you look at this diagram, you will be able to understand that the minimum efficient scale, 
the minimum efficient scale is happening at point r so this point so this will show the minimum point of your lac curve okay so uh, this is happening at this point and corresponding to this point r this this point is called point r and corresponding to this point you will be having uh, some output level you can call it as b okay so the minimum efficient scale is r with respect to the lmc curve and uh, the firms if if they go for producing at point r they will be producing b b would be the output level now what actually happens in this context is that uh, firms won't be producing at r they will not be producing b level of output instead they will be going for something called sub optimal output actually firm would be producing at q the falling portion of the lac curve they will be going for qs and corresponding to q some output level is uh, attained so that is called a so this is attained uh, by considering uh, lmc interacting or intersecting your um, mr curve at this point corresponding to this point you will be having some output level q isn't it just draw line extend this point x and draw a line to a point where you will be meeting your cost revenue curves so you could find uh, this is happening at q and corresponding to this uh, output level is a so you could find that firm actually produces only a level of output where the average cost is q so you could find that at at uh, r which is the average cost output would be is equal to b and at q which is the average cost output would be a now what is happening you could find that q is actually more than r q is more than r isn't it q is more than r and coming to output you could find that b is more than a isn't it so this much is only a and b means this much this is what is happening so q means cost it is more than r and uh, when it comes to when it comes to this is r and uh, this is q so this much this is p this could be p dash or something so you could find that p dash is lesser than p isn't it so now what are the implications of this figure unfortunately we could find that we are not attaining efficiency isn't it when it comes to the long run firms will be trying to attain greater efficiency by producing something called more and more and this might definitely increase efficiency so it's always better to compare this a and b scenario you could find that when you are a at a you will be producing only this much of output and when you are at b you will be producing this much of output so what is the difference between a and b so the difference between a and b this is called excess capacity the difference between difference between a and b so this is called excess capacity so this is excess capacity okay so in the long run firms will have a tendency to attain what is called greater efficiency because they will try to encourage more production in their firm and if that is happening definitely average cost will be coming down but again remember this might not be happening in the short run this is a problem again even though this is a case even though in the long run firms can attain what is called efficiency product differentiation as well as uh, something called diversity the intention to maintain diversity this will be having a tendency to operate during a scenario of excess capacity so when there is excess capacity happening you are not utilizing your full capacity and it will definitely lead to something called sub optimal level of production so the sub optimal level of production happens because you are not utilizing your full capacity so not at the minimum point of ac not at minimum point of ac okay 
So this will lead to something called uh, misallocation. This will definitely lead to some problem with efficiency. If coming to efficiency scenario, you could find that efficiency would be coming down in this context. So in short, what we could find is that though monopolistically competitive market structure is something that is prevailing in a real world scenario, it definitely fosters innovation and uh, product diversity. But at the same time, there can be a problem called excess capacity and this would ensure a kind of a problematic scenario in the form of a trade-off that will be happening between what you consider as diversity diversity and what you consider as efficiency so it's always like when you increase diversity your efficiency might be sometimes suffering when when you increase your efficiency your diversity might be suffering so this kind of scenario is happening when it comes to a realistic kind of monopolistically competitive market structure so you can actually download the Learn Economy app. Uh, you will be getting your previous year question papers and answers, free study materials, live as well as recorded classes and free MCQ based weekly test. What you have to do is just download this Learn Economy app. I'll be providing the uh, link in the description box. And also you can join our free Telegram community where you will be able to make a, a sound kind of discussion regarding your doubts and confusions and so on. So that is it. All for today, kindly like, share and subscribe to our channel for more such videos. Thank you for watching.